Come on, put your hands together and let's give the Lord praise today. He is worthy. Amen. Boy, as I was looking up at the screen and checking out everything that's coming up here, this place is alive. Got a lot going on over the next couple of weeks, and I was thinking, how can I retain all of that? And I'm glad they're pointing me to the app or the website. You need to check that out and really tap in. So many great things that are coming up, and we hope that you will participate and be involved and really connect with what's happening here at Life Source Church. We are thankful to the Lord for what He's doing. I saw also on the announcements that in a few weeks we're going to begin our freedom groups, and I'm very excited about that, and I'm going to talk about freedom today, and I really want to encourage you to have a mindset of connecting with our freedom groups coming up this fall. It can really be a life-changing experience for you, and I hope that you will uh, connect with our life groups and, and get into one that, that will fit your need and where it's located and the time and so on and so forth. It can really be a blessing to your life. I also want to just for a moment say thank you to our praise and worship team today. What a great, great opportunity. They led us into the presence of God. So grateful for that. We're going to have another time of worship at the very end of the message. I want to invite you to stand with me as we um, read the scripture. You know, this past week as I was reading the one-year Bible in the book of Nehemiah in the Old Testament, it's talking about how Ezra read the book of the law. And as he read the book of the law, the Bible says everyone stood. And I thought, oh, the reverence of the scriptures, how we treat God's word. So important. Open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. You have them and, and turn with me there. Let me see if I hear any pages rumbling or any phones that are just have an app there to get to your Bible. Yeah, it's good to see the Word of God out there. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Again, the focus of today's message is on freedom. Everybody say freedom. freedom. God has in mind for every single person for them to live a life of freedom. This is why Jesus came into the earth. The Bible tells us in Luke chapter 4, verse 17, that when he uh, went into the synagogue, as his custom was, they handed him the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He turned to the place where it was written, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good tidings to the poor. And then it goes on to talk about how the Lord had anointed him to set the captives free, the opening of the prison doors to those who are bound. At the core of the ministry of Jesus is to set people free. And your freedom is his divine purpose. So look with me in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. We're only going to read one verse, verse number 30. God alone made it possible for you to be in Christ Jesus. For our benefit, God made Christ to be wisdom itself. He is the one who made us acceptable to God. He made us pure and holy and he gave himself to purchase our freedom. He gave himself to purchase our freedom. That's why he came. My heart's desire for each and every one of you is that you would live a life of freedom in Christ. To live a life of freedom. Freedom in your mind. Freedom in your soul. Freedom in your spirit. Freedom in your relationships. Freedom to worship God. Free to live for Him and serve Him unfettered, unchained, unbound. So Father, today we thank You that Jesus gave His life that we might be set free. Let the words spoken today not only bring inspiration for us to want to connect, to be a part of a freedom group this fall, but also, God, let the word go forth to sever the chains, sever the ties, sever the ropes around our minds, our emotions, our physical 
bodies, everything, God, that the enemy would try to bind us with. Lord, let those chains drop today. Let us hear the rattling of them. Let us hear, God, the ropes being cut from off of our lives. And may you bring liberty and freedom into every person's life today above all things may christ be exalted god give us understanding as we read the scriptures today say things to people that i won't even verbally speak but that they need to hear inside of their own mind and heart may you communicate to them holy spirit your word today and we thank you that jesus is lifted high in this place in his holy name we pray and let everybody say amen Praise God. Can we give God praise once again? Come on, give the Lord praise. Thank you, Jesus. If you've experienced freedom in any area of your life, give Him praise today. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Praise the Lord. God bless you. You may be seated. I want to approach this message in two ways. By number one, talking about the things that hold us in bondage. The things that keep us from walking in freedom. And then secondly, what are the things that we need in our lives to help us walk in freedom? So it's from those two angles. What keeps us in bondage, but what moves us into freedom. Praise the Lord. Before I get deeply into that, Sue, it's good to see you in the house of God today. My sister... Uh, Sue has returned from uh, her trip to Zambia uh, this week, and uh, great things went on there is what I was told, and I see Bardette sitting just a few rows back, and I'm told that she and Stanley are returning to Baltimore. Is that right? Wow. So it's great to see you and everybody else. Why don't you turn to the person next to you and say, it's good to see you today. Amen. Hon, it's good to see you. Didn't I just see you 30 minutes ago? Yes. Okay. All right, here we go. What are the things that hold us in bondage? Write these down. Number one, thoughts. Your thoughts can bring bondage into your life. The way that you think, the way that you process, the way that you look at things, the way that you filter things. One of the things that uh, the freedom... Uh, freedom teaching brings to us is the concept of spirit soul and body and how we need to understand that we are a triune being you are spirit you are soul you are body I see the outermost part of who you are today you fixed yourself up pretty good by the way I just wonder if your inside matches your outside I wonder if you're if you look as good on the inside as you do outside today because some people can look great on the outside and inside they're a mess. We are spirit, soul, mind, and body. And the way we look at the world is we have a filter called our soul. And it filters everything in and out. Things come out of our mouths and, and out of our lives to other people through our soul. And if our soul's messed up, the way it comes out can be really bad. In the same way, we bring information in through that soul. And if the soul is messed up, what that person was trying to communicate to us will get totally misconstrued in our filter called our soul. And we'll just, we'll be a mess inside as well. Freedom is meant to give us total freedom, spirit, soul, mind, and body. And you are meant to be free in your thoughts. But some people's thoughts create what is called strongholds in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 5. We have strongholds in our minds. These are, these are mindsets. These are things that have developed uh, throughout the course of our lives, maybe through our upbringing, uh, the way we've been molded, shaped, taught, mentored, things we've experienced, things we've seen, how our parents raised us our siblings around us, society, culture, all of these things mold us and shape us in our thought life, and they create strongholds. Strongholds are what, just exactly what it says it is. It is a strong place of thinking that needs to be dismantled by the power of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. 
Let me read a scripture to you, Deuteronomy 6, verse 10. It says, So it shall be when the Lord your God brings you into the land of which he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you large and beautiful cities which you did not build, houses full of all good things which you did not fill, hewn out wells which you did not dig, vineyards, olive trees which you did not plant. When you have eaten and are full, then beware lest you forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. It's interesting to me, several things here. First of all, that when God blesses you, you may be the most vulnerable at that point. Sometimes need drives us to our knees. There's a dependency that we have to have on God to bring us through, to touch us, to give us the next day, to give us the next meal, to give us the next week in front of us. Need drives us to our knees. And when we're full and when things are great, and like God said to the Israelites, when God brings you in and you get all this stuff, beware lest you forget your thoughts. Watch out that you forget that it was God that did this for you. That you didn't do it yourself. It was God that dug you out of your pit. Listen to me somebody today. Don't forget it was God that lifted you out of the hellish hole that you were in one day. It was God that delivered you out of that place. It was God that walked with you. That, that lifted you out when you couldn't lift yourself. It was God Almighty that did that. Don't forget. And then they say, he says, don't forget that he got you out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. That's a place, friends, that some of us have dwelt in, a house of bondage. We, we, we came out of a culture of bondage, a house. I could go in really deep here, and I don't want to get bogged down, but just, just think of, of where you came from. The house that has all of the things that a house normally has with it. The teaching, the culture, the upbringing, the, the expectations, the, the words that are spoken. All of this creates the house that we're raised in, the house that we dwell in. It's a dwelling place. And God brings us out of that, and the first way for you to get out of that is right up here. You and I have to think differently. The second area that holds us into bondage, number one is thoughts. Number two, write this down, habits. Habits. Habits are routines that are just repeated over and over and over and over again. They're ingrained in our lives. Repeated behaviors that we do, these can hold us into bondage if they're the wrong type of behaviors. Galatians 5 verse 1, let me read this verse to you. It says, stand fast therefore in the liberty by which Christ has made us free and do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. A yoke of bondage, a yoke of That brings us into a place where we are doing things, thinking things, operating, functioning in a way that bring us not into liberty but into bondage. And notice the wording here that you're not entangled again. So the idea is that Christ set us free, but we revert back to habits. Habits are ingrained behaviors, and we need Jesus to sever that and set us free from that because if not, there is a pull back into those things that we got free from. And this is throughout Scripture. I mean, you can see it from Israel coming out of Egypt when they think about going back that way. You think about when Jesus said, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. There is a propensity to fall back into ingrained ways called habits habits that will entangle us all over again we need the power of Christ 
in our lives to be able to sever the habits because some habits might be months old, some habits may be 50 years old. They start as thoughts, they create pathways in our lives that we continually, can continually go down. And by the way, those are usually preset for us before we're ever born. It's generational. We get raised a certain way and we look at our parents and go, I'm never going to do that. I'm never going to do that. And then when we get 30 years old, we go. And we find ourselves just walking in that same path. But remember the good news. Christ has come to set us free. Now I'm going to get to that part of it, right? In just a few moments. But I want to highlight some of the things that can keep us bound. The third thing, write this down, relationships. The third thing that can bring us into bondage are relationships. Every relationship you have Every relationship you have is either bringing you into a place of greater freedom or greater bondage. I'm using silence today because I want it to really sink in. Some of you are connected to the wrong people. One of the most difficult things to do in life is sever poisonous, toxic relationships. You've got to get that taken care of. Get it taken care of because you can be in church today, church next week, you can join a freedom group. If you are in the wrong relationships, They'll keep pulling you back and keep pulling you down and keep sucking the life out of you. <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> you can go to the gas station today and you can pump <clears throat> your car full of gas. <clears throat> and if you've got a leaky fuel pump <clears throat> or you've got a pinhole <clears throat> in the bottom of your gas tank, you can pour all the gas in you want to. But it's going to leak out. You can come to church, praise God, get into the Word. You can pray all day long. You can fast 30 days. But if you've got toxic relationships in your life, you've got to leak. And the more you pump in, it's going to fall right out. You've got to seal up the leaks in your life and the things that are draining you and exhausting you. You know, I've, through the years I've preached about exhaustion. I've preached about stress. I've, I've preached about getting weary and tired. And I've seen God refresh and restore people. And it's wonderful how God is able to do that. You know, the Spirit of the Lord can, can just refresh and, and restore you. And you can feel good leaving here. But if you fall back into some relationships that are that are just not encouraging and cultivating your spiritual walk with God you'll you'll get exhausted 48 hours from now there's some things that are just out to wear you down you know when you look at the book of Daniel he, he talks about in the last days he talks about how the enemy is warring against God's people. And one of the things that he's doing, it's the scripture says, is he's wearing out the saints of the Most High. One of the, one of the I think, chief tactics of the enemy is to wear you out. Wear you down. Why? Because if he wears you down and wears you out, you have no strength. And if you have no strength, this is what I've just found out from reading the book of Nehemiah this past week. If you have no strength, you have no joy because the joy of the Lord is your strength. 
He wants to wear you out because if he can wear you out, then you won't have faith. It'll be all you can do to take one step in front of another. And maybe some of you are in the house of God today and you just got here by the skin of your teeth. You just made your way into the house of God. Listen, you're not meant to limp into the house of God and limp out. You're meant to come in and get filled up and empowered and anointed and go out a warrior of the faith. Relationships. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 18. Let me read this passage to you. For when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are slaves of corruption. By, for by whom a person is overcome, by him also is he brought into bondage. Let me read that little portion again. For by whom a person is overcome. Notice the wording here. Not by what a person is overcome. By whom. A lot of people miss this. Because what Peter is talking about here, he's talking about people that bring other people into bondage. He's not talking about a situation. He's not talking about a habit. He's talking about a relationship. By whom a person is overcome, by him also is he brought into bondage. What is this telling us? That we can have toxic relationships that bring us into bondage to that person. For if, after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome. The latter end is worse for them than the beginning. What does that mean? Here's what that means. That means when God sets you free from a toxic relationship, don't you dare go back into that toxic relationship because the latter end is going to be worse than it was in the beginning. And you know what toxic people will do? They need to feast on you. They draw their strength from you. And they'll do everything they can to stay in that relationship with you. Even though things may get a little out of hand, they'll come back. I think the Word of God says it best. They're a wolf in sheep's clothing. They'll put on an extra layer of sheep's clothing just to look good. And they'll lower their voice and they'll sound good. But the agenda, remember, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. There are spirits behind people and behind things. And the agenda of that spirit is to talk persuasively and carefully and kindly to bring you back into bondage. I don't know who this is for, but it's for somebody here today. It's amazing as I've watched humans, human behavior over the years. We hug what harms us and we embrace what enslaves us. I've seen this over the years. It's a demonic thing. It's a demonic thing, folks. You think people would run away from that, but we run right back into it. The fourth thing that brings us into bondage is ancestry. Again, I mentioned it, re related to it a little bit earlier. We are brought into situations and circumstances created by our parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, and on way back. It is years of multiplied stuff, compounding of thoughts and behaviors and whatever it is. Now, here's the thing. If we come from ancestry, which is godly, guess what? We got compounded interest coming to us. That's a blessing. But if you come from a family that didn't serve God, if you come from a family that did a lot of wickedness and evil, then that's compounded and you walk right into that. Here is the blessed story though. Jesus came to set us free and you don't have to be subject to that all of your life. Amen? 
Galatians 4 verse 28 says these words. Now we brethren, as Isaac was, are children of promise. Now he's talking about, if you go back in chapter 4 and you read prior to this, he's talking about Abraham. Isaac was born as a child of promise. Ishmael was born after the flesh. So he's contrasting those that he who was born after the spirit versus he who was born after the flesh. And he's saying those are two symbols of two covenants is what he's getting into. But, but watch this. But as he who was born according to the flesh then persecuted him who was born according to the spirit. Remember? Remember that? In the Old Testament, even so it is now. Nevertheless, what does the scripture say? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall be, not be heir with the son of the free woman. What is he saying there? Isaac shall not be a co-heir with Ishmael. Cast out the bondwoman and Ishmael so that the heir can be rightfully in place. And look at this. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. Amen. Praise God. So if you were born, we were all born into the slavery of this flesh, of this nature, brought to us by Adam and Eve. We were all born into sin, okay? But the particular issues concerning sin, again, are compounded because of our ancestors' choices that they made. Whether to serve God and live for him or whether to serve the flesh and live for themselves. And now here we come along, right? Same, it's, it, you look, what, what it is in the natural, it is in the spiritual. If you're born in, the nat- in circumstances in the natural that are unfavorable, you could be born in spiritual, in a spiritual house, which is be unfavorable to your spiritual walk and spiritual life. Do you understand that? But Jesus came to set us free, and what Paul is reminding us here in the book of Galatians is now we are children of the free woman. He's using symbolism there. All right, now let me move on. What are the things that bring us freedom? Now what you'll find is the very things that bring us into bondage are also the very things that bring us into freedom. So write these down. Some of them are going to be exactly the same, but you have to look at it differently. Number one, thoughts. Same thing that brings us into bondage, same thing that can bring us freedom. Thoughts. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 6 says this, so we praise God for the wonderful kindness he has poured out on us because we belong to his dearly loved son. He is so, he is so rich in kindness that he purchased our freedom, he purchased our freedom through the blood of his son and our sins are forgiven. He has showered his kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding, all wisdom and understanding up here. Wisdom and understanding. When you get your mind renewed, Romans 12, 1 and 2, right? I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Don't be conformed to this world, but what? Be transformed by how? The renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Your thoughts renewed in Christ can bring freedom to your life. So you need a constant diet and input. And what he's reminding us here is that you get wisdom and understanding as you realize that Jesus Christ, through the blood that he shed, purchased your freedom. You say, well, pastor, I'm struggling today. You know, one of the great things I love about God is he sees us not for exactly who we are today, but for who he's created us to be tomorrow. And he addresses us that way. You say, pastor, I'm really struggling today. I'm battling fear. I'm battling this. About Well, guess what? God sees you as an overcomer. God sees you as victorious. God sees you as being able to walk through that and out of that. 
You say, well, why am I going through this? Well, when you read the New Testament, you understand that everything you and I face, everything that we go through is so that we can minister that to somebody else down the road. So here's Pastor Becky standing up here today and saying, hey, I was diagnosed with breast cancer in, Feb- in, uh, in September of 2009. I know what fear is. I've lived with it. I've walked through it. The devil told me he was going to kill me, blah, 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 but I'm, I'm free today. Well, why is that? Just so that she could be alive? Yeah, thank God for that. Why is that? So that I could still have a wife? Yeah, wonderful. I'm glad she's alive and she's standing beside me. I need this woman. I don't know what I would do without her. I love her with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. On top of that, somebody needs that. Somebody needs that testimony. See, you go through what you go through so that you can minister to that to somebody else. And if you're sitting on that, you've got to get off of that because somebody needs your story. Somebody needs your testimony. Somebody needs to know that you were flat on your back. Somebody needs to know that you were broke. Somebody needs to know that you were bound. Somebody needs to know you had an abortion. Somebody needs to know that you were in jail. Somebody needs to know that you were depressed. Somebody needs to know you put a gun to your head. Somebody needs to know you were trying to slit your wrist. Somebody needs to know you took a whole bottle of pills. Somebody needs to know that if it wasn't for Jesus Christ, you wouldn't be here today. Somebody needs you. And hear me today, this is one of the reasons why you need to get into a group. You say, I don't need it. Somebody else needs it. It's not all about you. Somebody needs your word of encouragement. Somebody needs your prayer. Maybe it's all about you giving out and not taking in. When you walk out of this building today, I hope and pray you'll go out to that atrium lobby area and find those people that are leading freedom groups this fall, beginning 9-11. And you'll say, I'm in. I'm in. It's time you told your story. It's time you shared your freedom with somebody else. The Bible says freely you've received, freely give. You've received, haven't you? How many of you have received from the Lord? He's blessed you. Now it's time to give. It's time to give. The second thing that brings freedom into our lives is habits. Good ones. Habits isn't a bad word if you have good ones. What's your habit related to prayer? What's your habit related to scripture reading? What's your habit related to love? What's your habit related to serving? You're in the house of God today. Many of you we see here regularly. This is a habit. It's a routine that you're in. They're good habits, right? Those habits repeated over and over can bring freedom into your life. I love Psalm 146, verse 5 through 7. Happy is he who has the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps truth forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord gives freedom to the prisoners. Thank God. See, habits, bad ones, can bring you into prison. But once the Lord sets you free, you have to develop other habits, good habits. You have to replace the bad ones with the good ones, the ones that bring life, the ones that bring hope, the ones that bring help, the one that brings you peace. The third thing that brings us our freedom are relationships. Notice what I said, bad relationships can bring you into bondage. Good relationships can bring you into freedom. Galatians 5.13, for you have been called to live in freedom, not freedom to satisfy your sinful nature, but freedom to what? Serve one another. For the whole law can be summed up in this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. Isn't that amazing? For the whole law. The whole law. Remember, at that time when he wrote this, the New Testament hadn't been canonized yet. It's not been put together yet. These are letters that have just been going out. What did they have to go on? The law. The whole law, the Old Testament, 
portion of the law can be summed up in this. Love. Love your neighbor. Love people. Now let me ask you something. How can you love people if you're not connected to them? You got to connect. Again, I'm going to hit it over and over. Freedom group. Get into a freedom group this fall. Okay? The fourth that can bring you into freedom is the spirit of the living God. The spirit of God. Romans 8, 14 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you didn't receive the spirit of bondage, again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Write that one down. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty, or in this passage it, that, that I've read here, this particular version, he gives freedom. The Spirit of God is here today, and he brings freedom. Let me move on. I want the worship team to come, please. The fifth that will bring you freedom is the Word of God. The Word of God. John 8, 31, 32, and 36. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. But what is the, what did Jesus say is the very thing that brings freedom into your life? The word. If you continue in my word, you're going to be disciples and you'll know truth. See, this is why the freedom group is important this week uh, the, for you to get connected to it. Over these next couple of weeks, sign up. Today, when you go out, sign up to be a part of a freedom group. And as you walk in freedom, listen, what are we going to do in the freedom groups? We're going to study some different things about how we can be set free, how, how our spirit, soul, and our mind and body works, how that functions, how we could be set free from greed and selfishness and lust, how we could be set free from shame and fear, how, can we, how we can be loosed from the things that want to hold us into bondage. I'm going to tell you, folks, people are going to go through the freedom groups this fall, and they are going to be set free by the power of God. Why? Because Jesus said in John 8, 31, if you continue in my word, You'll be my disciples. You're going to know truth, and that truth is going to explode in your life to bring freedom and liberty. And whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Amen? Amen. I want you to stand with me, please, all over the house. <clears throat> I'm going to close with this. Galatians 4, verse 3. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Jesus Christ. What does that mean? That means, as the scripture says, all things are yours. Everything comes to you as a child of God. No longer a slave, but a child of God. Amen? Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord praise today. Glory be to God. Now here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the next five minutes before I let you go. And we're just going to worship God. You know what I've seen over the last several months? Whether I'm here or whether I'm at Living Word over in Silver Spring preaching that during worship segments, people are being healed spontaneously without anything, anybody laying hands on anyone.
people are getting set free two weeks ago when we had a worship segment at the end of the service somebody came up to me after the service they said you got to hear this testimony so there was a person here for months they'd had this pain all on the side of their face down into their neck and into their arms and they said they were just worshiping God and they said all of a sudden they realized I don't have this pain anymore completely gone completely healed this 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 young woman was telling me this out in the atrium lobby area and as she's telling me this I said to her I said were, did, were you consciously praying for God to heal you she said no all I was doing was worshiping and as I was worshiping the pain just left me and guess what why exactly while she's telling me this there's a woman over here who's listening to this testimony and she lifts up her cane to me she said I walked in here needing this cane needing help she said but the power of God came over me as we were worshiping today she said I don't need my need this cane today to walk out of this building so listen all I'm here to tell you today is all things are possible if you need your mind free today if you need to be healed if you need we're going to just take a few minutes to worship. I want you to forget all about your stuff, your problems, everything going on. And I want you to focus on Him. And when you focus on Him, things can happen. Amen? Hallelujah. Father, we love you today. We thank you for your presence here. Come on, lift your hands all over the building. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm no longer a slave to fear. No longer a slave, but a son. Cause I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Worship you, Jesus. Cause I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Because I am child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear, cause I am a child of God. Sing it again. I'm no longer a slave to fear, cause I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Yes, I am a child of God. I've been set free. I've been set free. Come on, just worship Him this morning. Yes, Holy Spirit. Right there. You can be forgiven of your sins. Ask God to forgive you. Come into your life. Right there, you can be set free by the power of God. Freedom. The Spirit of God is moving all over this congregation today. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, we worship you, Jesus.
time you split the sea. Come on. You split the sea so I can walk. that last part that says you rescued me so I could stand and sing has anybody been rescued by Almighty God amen hallelujah I want our prayer teams to come and stand if you need prayer before you leave feel free to come we'd be glad to pray with you but lift your right hand to heaven we're gonna make a declaration today and I want you to say it as loud as you can come on lift your voice high and say this after me I am saved I am healed. I am free. I have victory. I have authority. And change is on the way. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah.